uh, welcome viewers to my views on news i hope you all are doing well and keeping yourself safe and uh, healthy hello mr sajid how are you today i am fine mr sharma how are you what is today's topic about eritrea uh, well i am doing very well mr sajid uh, last week we discussed conscription and that made me curious about its impact on eritrean army so today we will discuss in length the capabilities of eritrean army and its status in the region so my first question to you is that what is the overall status of eritrean army in the region how do you rate it as compared to its neighboring countries well uh when we analyze eritrean military's capabilities we must not uh, forget how big eritrea is a small country uh, with a few million people and we are comparing it with neighboring countries big countries like uh, ethiopia sudan uh, kenya not a neighbor uh, but in east africa if you compare eritrean defense force not just army eritrean defense force comprising eritrean army eritrean navy eritrean air force in neighboring countries like firstly sudan no comparison sudan does not have uh, uh, a large army because the country split into two uh, i don't know decade ago Sudan, South Sudan. Then, uh, Jinjabid fighters were made part of the army. Army is accused of being involved in corruption. It has been run like a cartel, involved in gold trade as well. It's not a professional army. That is how I understand Sunni's army. Uh, Djibouti, Eritrean neighbor, small country. We shouldn't compare. I think Djibouti and Eritrean armies. Ethiopia. Uh, any comparable Ethiopia and uh, Eritrea? I think we can discuss that in detail. Other countries like Somalia, uh, a fractured country uh, with the parts uh, under Al Shabaab, under sanctions, uh, not allowed to purchase weapons, uh, and Somalia is having its military trained in Eritrea. uh somalia soldiers being trained in the uk in turkey so it does not have a very organized army kenya uh working democracy but uh, even kenyan army is not as impressive as eritrean army so uh, leaving ethiopia aside leaving ethiopia aside uh, i don't think there is any army in east africa in neighboring countries which can match the capabilities of uh, eritrean army we can talk uh, for hours about this comparison i'm just giving you uh, uh, a general comparison that eritrea is a much more uh, capable army uh, if you compare with the neighboring countries uh well mr sajid as you said that we need to um uh, compare ethiopia with eritrea in detail i've made few comparisons i have collected information from different sources so these are not exact numbers but they are uh, approximate numbers the global ranking of eritrea is 124 whereas ethiopia is 65 the total population is double in ethiopia as compared to eritrea but surprisingly the total per army personnel are the same 3700 000 each again uh i'm giving a disclaimer that it's an uh, approximate number secondly uh, active personnel uh surprisingly in eritrea are more than ethiopia they are 175000 whereas ethiopia is 150000 reserves are 200000 in eritrea and 150000 in ethiopia so the men power you can you can make the analysis now um, i got little numbers of their weaponry as well uh, tanks of eritrea has uh, uh, they are 300 whereas ethiopia 340 
uh, AFVs, uh, Eritrea 200, 110 Ethiopia, aircrafts 33 uh, Eritrea and 90 Ethiopia, helicopters 13 Eritrea, whereas Ethiopia has 32. Uh, I got the number of total naval assets of Eritrea, which is 20, but I couldn't find much about Ethiopia. In any case, Ethiopia is like a land uh, block. Um, so seeing the, these numbers, what is your analysis uh, about the comparison of these two countries? Firstly, Ethiopian population is down, I think, more than 100 million and Eritrea around 4 to 5 million. Uh, Secondly, I think we should compare pre-2020 war Ethiopian military and Eritrean military and current Ethiopian military and Eritrean military. If you compare uh, the Ethiopian army which existed before the start of war uh, in November 2020 in northern Ethiopia, that Ethiopian army was a strong army, built by, obviously, EPRDF, led by TPLF. Uh, you remember that in the second week of November 2020, Tegaray fired long-range missiles, which managed to reach Asmara, Eritrean capital. It means back then... Uh, Ethiopia had this capability to strike Eritrea precisely, the capital. That was pre-war Ethiopian military. And we know that uh, Ethiopia was building uh, a dam good in Banishangal Gomez region. It secured some S-300 air defense systems as well. Eritrea did not have all these modern weapons uh, which Ethiopia had back then. Northern Command, based in uh, Tigray, was a strong unit of Ethiopian army. Ethiopian army had combat experience. It had experience of peacekeeping operations. Uh, its intelligence agency was uh, one of the best in the region. Uh, so back then, I think uh, the two armies uh, uh, could be compared. But if you compare today's Ethiopian army and Eritrean army, uh, Ethiopian army is in the process of uh, reconstruction. Because uh, ENDF as an institution has been destroyed in the last two years of war in northern Ethiopia. And uh, uh, we saw that uh, those who have been arrested, those who have been taken prisoner by Tegaray for, uh, forces, the fighters, most of them were from Ethiopian National Defense Force. Their northern command in Tegaray destroyed uh, their northern command uh, soldiers, uh, hundreds of them killed, captured. Uh, so it was in a state of disarray. Now, Ethiopia is restructuring, it's rebuilding its army. Uh, and it is doing recruitments, it has bought weapons, uh, it has managed to buy modern combat drones from Turkey, it bought TB2s from uh, China, and the U8 bought wing long drones. And the drones changed battlefield picture. We saw that uh, last year that. Uh, these drones, they were a pain in the side uh, for uh, the Tegaray forces. So now uh, I think that uh, Ethiopian army is in the phase of rebuilding, reconstruction. It has realized, uh, Ethiopia has realized that for survival, it needs to create an army without any ethnic fissures modern professional army with uh, and well equipped as well uh, but Eritrea on the other hand uh, it could not uh, modernize its army in terms of purchase of weapons uh, mm. it, it, it still has those uh, MiG uh, and SUs of uh, uh, Russian uh, fighter jets and bombers uh, its uh, navy uh, has speedboats, no frigates, uh, uh, no question of having uh, aircraft carriers, obviously. 
डिफरेंट इज देयर आर्मी देयर इन्फेंट्री बेसिकली Hmm. So every army has like you know navy and uh, uh, air force and then ground forces. Which of these is the strongest in uh, Eritrea? Well, what was the EPL? EPLF, Eritrean People Liberation Front, the group which fought uh, for years for independence. It was basically a guerrilla force. army you can say uh, so they fought for years and back then they were operating in small units of 30 40 uh, uh, fighters they were called matsbis i think uh, and from this guerrilla force from pl mm-hmm. eritrea uh, built its army as i said earlier that uh, their navy is not well equipped the air force uh, does not have and it does not have any combat drones we can say for sure though we we heard some rumors that eritrea wanted to buy some combat drones like ethiopia has it could not buy any combat drones uh, no uh, modern aircrafts as well their strength is their army their infantry uh, the ground force which has uh, years of experience it could be uh, at a disadvantage in terms of having lesser weapons but the strongest part and and by the way if if you uh, look at numbers a uh, number of uh, members of eritrean navy eritrean air force eritrean army bulk of eritrean defense force consists of army ground force that is the strength of eritrean army eritrean defense force uh what do they have any weakness what are, what is their weakness do they have any yeah lots of weaknesses uh, main problem is that uh, uh they are relying heavily on ground forces they have uh, infantry uh equipped with light arms uh, yes artillery pieces tanks as well but problem is that uh, uh, they are faced with neighbors who don't have uh, uh, impressive air force uh, or, or even uh, navies so they yeah. focused on building their army they could not modernize their air force they could modernize their navy and partly it's due to their economic conditions that the country remained under sanctions for uh, years still under sanctions and eritrea was heavily relying on ethiopia on uh, chinese and russian attack it could not uh, update its itself with the uh, trainings abroad its officers it isolated itself in terms of exchange of uh, military knowledge in terms of trainings abroad though uh, written officers they they, they uh, do visit uh, some uh, countries for trainings but mostly eritrea remained isolated so it could not build its navy and air force partly due to economic restrictions it has managed to build a formidable army ground force which uh, is almost unmatched in terms of capability in the region hmm so uh, every army has uh, three components uh, one is uh, their expertise their weaponry and then manpower uh, is any of uh, is there any one of them which is uh, uh, eritrea's strength or do they have some other strength in order to have a better army than others infantry especially well uh, i think two things matter uh, for armies for forces uh, for me as uh, i have been reporting different conflicts i think battle field experience combat experience is the asset of uh, forces those mm-hmm. countries which remain involved in wars their generals their soldiers they learn they uh, update themselves uh, they up their capabilities uh, they upgrade their weaponry 
error t and plus point is that they have been involved in uh, conflicts war against ethiopia a uh, two year long war then two decades ago war against uh, ethiopia they fought against yemen against djibouti too they had intervention in uh, they were accused of being intervening interfering in sudan in darfur they were accused of backing al shabab and uh, they have trained uh, uh era uh, uh, somalia's uh, soldiers recently mm. their combat experience uh, is unmatched no army uh, in this region has so much combat experience mm. uh, 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 firstly and secondly i think they know the region very well uh, their intelligence agency uh, which is which is not very visible when it comes to its operations but they have tremendous presence in neighboring countries in ethiopia in in kenya uh, in sudan eastern sudan so their intelligence agency keeps on working in time of peace as well this sort of uh, unity of command uh, with a strong uh, army and a very active intelligence agency it is missing in other countries that is why uh, in times of war all these iratian military units they combine and uh, they turn into formidable force for their opponents hmm well uh, in your view what is the future uh, of army in eritrea how do you see that well uh, army uh, well, they, their ground force as i said earlier it's a formidable force uh, no country in the region can challenge it i think mm. uh, ethiopia is trying to rebuild its army it will take years uh, uh on the other hand other countries they have their own problems like sudan uh, uh like uh, somalia only problem is that as long as isa sawoki is in power this military will continue to be a strong military what will happen after isa sawoki post isa sawoki scenario could be dangerous for eritrean army as long as he is in command uh, he knows how to lead his army uh, we have seen that uh, the army has proven that uh, it can counter bigger uh, rivals but post isaia scenario uh, is unpredictable uh, though the army has not been built along ethnic lines uh, Eritrea has managed to uh, build an army on the foundation of Eritreanism, a battle-hardened army with lots of uh, tough military training received by the army members. But I personally think that post Isaias and Voki, Eritrea uh, could see fissures within the army, and then we'll see the real picture, because. Mm. Uh, people are forced to undergo military training reservists they, they cannot flee the country some are old uh, so whenever they are recalled like they were recalled a few months ago by rtn government they had to rejoin the war once once the man in power loses his his grip a new man uh, takes uh, office what will happen after that will eritrean army continue to be as strong as it is now i doubt that let's see well that pretty much uh, winds up uh, today's topic and uh, i think that uh, you know uh, eritreans are tough fighters there is no doubt about it because they had been fighting for their independence for 30 years and then uh, once eritrea came into being uh, they have been engaged in different conflicts with their neighboring countries off and on so uh, in total they have been fighting for last 60 years almost um 
well uh, this must have made uh, their uh, expertise uh, sharpen and uh, they must have become tough fighters but then it has its negative impact also what about the uh, mental health of the people what about the emotional well being of the people what about the economical impact which eventually affects people uh, in a country well i'm nobody to judge i would like to leave this uh, thought with my viewers to think about and uh, thank you mr sajid would you like to say any closing remarks would you like to give any re closing remarks yeah you summed it, you, you summed it, uh, summed it up uh, i think uh, uh, we must not uh, overlook what is happening here at ya people forced to join the military uh women forced to be deployed in combat roles they are not uh, promoted to the ranks of generals uh, then uh, girls face hard times at masawa so while eritrea eritrean government uh, brags about a strong army uh, it must also ensure people uh, get some relief eritrean youth at least because they're fleeing the country uh, for fear of conscription it means something is wrong in eritrea so a lot needs to happen uh, as long as the man is in power we might not see any change but post isar the rocky scenario could be horrific well uh, well i'm looking forward for mr asaya safarki's next interview and as soon as he it comes on tv uh, we'll be here for our viewers with your analysis on it so thank you uh, mr sajid and thank you viewers please stay connected uh, we look forward to your suggestions don't forget to write us uh, see you next week bye for now yeah it was was in sudan i think yesterday in eastern sudan so he might be uh, there for interview uh, in the coming week Thank you viewers see you in the next such discussion thank you bye bye